Tonight, the latest on a homicide investigation on Arcadia Avenue. And a Tennessee law banning doctors from performing transgender care on minors is now in full effect. Plus, the first chat sip and cue today, we've got the inside scoop on the unique event. This is Local 3 News Weekend. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Local 3 News at 11. I'm Cornelia Nicholson. Now, this just into our station, the Chattanooga Police Department has confirmed the scene we brought to you at 6 was actually, in fact, a homicide. Now, police say they were notified of a shooting just after 5 p.m. When they responded, they found a man deceased from gunshot wounds. Police are working leads in the case right now, but no arrests have been made. And earlier, Chattanooga police respond to a pedestrian struck just a few hours ago on Highway 58. They say it happened near the 5900 block of Highway 58. That's across from Linda's Produce. They found the woman suffering from life-threatening injuries, and she has been taken to the hospital. Now, traffic was shut down in both directions as a result of that accident, but looks like traffic is moving slowly as of, moving smoothly as of right now. A well, pedestrian was hit and killed this morning. The Chattanooga Police Department say it happened around 11 a.m. on East 11th Street. That's by the Chattanooga Community Kitchen. Now, police found a woman suffering at the scene who later died at the hospital from her injuries. Police are investigating, but right now there have been no arrests. That includes the driver. Well, Tennessee law banning doctors from performing transgender care on minors is now in effect. This after a federal appeals court reversed a lower court's decision to suspend the ban. Our Jemiah Beatty explains what this really means for children and families. Now that the ban has been reinstated, Tennessee doctors can no longer provide minors with hormone blockers or perform surgeries. Tennessee's Attorney General filed a motion last month banning gender-affirming treatment by doctors on trans youth. The motion reverses the order by a lower court judge to pause the ban that would have otherwise started on July 1st. In a statement to the Associated Press, Tennessee's Attorney General said the case is far from over, but is a big win. Tennessee House Representative from Chattanooga, Yusuf Hakim, initially voted to block gender-affirming treatment for minors. Now he thinks the treatment should be available. In my view, you've gone through an extensive uh, process that uh, gives knowledge and understanding to all those involved. And as a result of that, uh, I think that the care should be made available. The federal appeals court noted policies regarding trans youth should be left to Congress rather than judges. The American Civil Liberties Union issued a statement with attorneys calling the decision heartbreaking, saying, quote, we will continue to challenge this law until it's permanently defeated. The appeals court's decision to reinstate the ban is temporary. The court will hear the entire case on September 30th. Stay with Local 3 News for more updates. Jeremiah Beatty, Local 3 News. Now we have reached out to other lawmakers, including Tennessee Senator Todd Gardenhire and Bo Watson, to hear their thoughts on the ban. We'll let you know when we do hear back from them. Well, one person is dead after a crash on Highway 28 yesterday where a car and a pickup truck pulling a trailer hit head on. The third car was damaged by the debris from that crash. The Dunlap Fire Department's crew says that they had to extricate the victim from the car, but unfortunately they did not survive. The truck driver was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. It happened in Sequatchie County near the Marion County line. The Tennessee Highway Patrol is currently investigating that crash. Well, an attempted traffic stop turned into a chase last night. Hamilton County Sheriff's Office deputy attempted to pull over Devon Revery for speeding on North Moore Road Lane around 8 p.m. Now, the deputy says the driver began changing lanes as if he was stopping, but took off onto Tomahawk Trail. He was driving 70 miles per hour in a 40 zone, crossing the yellow lane and forcing one driver off the road. The deputy says that's when the suspect went airborne as he passed Tunnel Boulevard on Shallowford Road. The suspect finally stopped when the deputy blocked him in. A man in the passenger seat got out and ran away and was not captured. Officers arrested Devin and charged him with felony evading arrest, possession of controlled substance and drug paraphernalia, as well as other charges. Let's head over to meteorologist Allison Pryor now. Allison, looks like the rain is already coming down outside of our studio. How bad is things going to get tonight?
All right, it looks like oh, we had some technical difficulties with Allison's microphone. We're going to come back to her in just a couple of minutes, but hundreds of Chattanoogans came together today for a unique festival with a new twist. Our photojournalist Rico Holston was there to capture the community around barbecue and beer. We've uh, had our annual festival. We've been doing brew skies for years, we being the Chattanooga Breakfast Rotary Club, and we've rebranded this year and added a barbecue contest to it. Since I lived over in Memphis for a bunch of years, they put me in charge of the barbecue contest. So we just finished that up, had some great winners, had some great ribs, and had some great home brews as well, because the breweries and everybody continued to participate this year. So we had uh, food and grog to offer to the public. Thank you, sponsors. And without your support, it'd be tough to break even. We appreciate it. The top three, I happen to still have them in uh, my palm here. Uh, number two, number three was uh, Smokey and the Bandits, a local team helmed by Jimmy Phillips. Uh, number two was Tikaloo Barbecue, and he's up out of Georgia. And then number one was Fats Barbecue, and they came down from uh, Northeast Tennessee. Breakfast, uh, Chattanooga Breakfast and Rotary Club invited us for the third year in a row to come and provide music for this event. So we're, yeah, we're sharing a lot of blues, funk, rock and roll, some good covers and everything for a, a really great crowd. Oh man, what can you not love? You got beer, you got food, you got music. I mean, what's not to love about that? So a little bit of everything, get to try out all these great local breweries, had some fantastic barbecue. Someone dropped off some ribs for us earlier that made the day for us. All right, looks like they had a lot of fun over there. Well, you know what they say, second time's a charm. Let's head over to meteorologist, meteorologist Allison Pryor once again. Let's see if we can try this again, Allison. <laughs> All right, so we are tracking the rain and storms for this evening in the nighttime hours. Here's what our current radar looks like. What you're going to notice is most of the activity is ongoing in our Tennessee and North Carolina communities. Not quite as much happening in Alabama and Georgia. The one exception is this storm cell that's in portions of Fannin County. So let's take a look at this. All of this is pushing from west to east. At this point in time, my greatest concern is where you see that box there in Fannin County. That's going to be what we call a special weather statement. So gusty wind with that torrential rain rainfall, but also extending throughout eastern portions of Polk County. So that's going to be your turtle town, your duck town, those communities in between a lot of heavy rainfall outside of that too. Do notice this green box right here in Grundy County. That's going to be a flood advisory in place until 1115 uh, central time. So we still have a while for that to happen. As we look at future scan, you'll see that progression as it further moves to the east with a little bit of a southerly trend pushing down into Fannin County as well and deeper into Cherokee County. Now, as far as what to expect, Potentially some localized flooding tonight. We certainly have seen a couple of bursts of heavy rainfall, especially around McMinn and Meigs counties. And also we have that flood advisory in place in Grundy County as well. Again, very little so far in Georgia and in Alabama. We'll take a look at our numbers from our sky watchers. And of course, your three degree guarantee coming up a little bit later. All right, Allison, looking forward to it. Well, we're coming up when we return to Local 3 News at 11. Time to pick up your paddles because new pickleball courts opened up today in the scenic city. And as we head to break, let's take a look at our Doug Yates Towing and Recovery Cam.
Welcome back. The grand opening of Chattanooga's first public outdoor pickleball court took place this morning over at Batters Place Park. District 4 Councilman Darren Ledford was joined by other city officials for Saturday's ribbon cutting to open the new courts. Now, in the past three years, the number of play people playing pickleball in the U.S. has actually grown by 159 percent. Ledford mentioned the sport welcomes players of all ages. Following Saturday's ceremony, the courts opened up for lessons, gameplay, youth games and tours. Pickleball paddle sets will also be given away until supplies run out. Now, dozens of people and their families came out to test the new courts. That time together as a family, that's so important. And we all have fun, we get a little exercise too, it's a great benefit. It's a fun, it's a fun place to be and lots of people can play because there's lots of courts and it's just fun to be here. Councilman Ledford says the new dedicated pickleball courts are part of the Parks and Rec's new plan recently adopted by the City Council. The new court is the first of many. Well, coming up when we return to Local 3 News, more sports, weather and news when we return. We'll be right back. Thanks for sticking with us. Police say a gunman riding a scooter opened fire in Brooklyn and Queens, New York today, killing one person and injuring three others. Now, this is the male suspect on your screen driving a scooter, then shooting and striking a business. Investigators believe the shooter picked his targets at random. They say he was able to take they were able to take the suspect in custody within two hours. Numerous witnesses described a male on a scooter randomly firing at a group of people that were standing on the corner of 108th Street and Jamaica Avenue. Now, they say 25-year-old has at least one prior arrest in the city. An 87-year-old man was shot in the back and did not survive his injuries. 
Now, as we check in with meteorologist Allison Pryor, here's a look out of our Easy Auto camera in Cleveland. Allison, I hear some overnight storms are headed our way. Yeah, they're already here. We're having a lot of locations that are dealing with rainfall and storms right now. Before we get to that, I'm going to go over our three degree guarantee, which was a perfect hit by Chief Meteorologist David Carnes. 91 degrees, the predicted high and the official high today was 91 degrees. 10 more dollars in the jackpot sitting at $70 right now for the month of July. Tomorrow's high temperature, not quite as hot, looking at a high of 87 degrees for your Sunday. From our sky watchers for today, we're looking at a combination of up upper 80s to around 90 degrees. Look at this. Got an updated total from Jeremy and Mont Eagle 2.08 inches. Remember that flood advisories in place for portions of Grundy County. Also got updates on rainfall totals from 10 Mile, Riceville and Jasper as well. You'll notice in Riceville 1.2 inches and even getting up into the 90s today, even in Cherokee County with the mountains. We also had 91 today in Bryan, Alabama and 91 degrees in Somerville. So let's get right to it now with the rain and storms that are ongoing at this time. There's that flood advisories that's in place until 11 15 p.m. Central Time for Grundy County, where we have the heaviest rain now and where I'm the most concerned about. That's going to be eastern portions of Polk County and also this western edge of Fannin County. That special weather statement was allowed to expire, but you're seeing those purple colors, even some of that black. That's indicating torrential rainfall coming down for those mountains and even some pockets of some isolated hail may be possible. A lot of lightning strikes with this. This is going to be Copper Hill, McKaysville, Turtle Town, Duck Town, just getting poured on and a lot of lightning. You're also going to notice all these red colors. Northern Cherokee County pretty much filling up Bradley County portions of Hamilton County, uh, southern areas of Meigs County, Ray County up to the north McMinn County. So just be careful if you have to drive somewhere tonight and um, we've had that heavy rain in Grundy County, but there's also a really strong thunderstorm earlier from Dayton to Decatur over into McMinn County. So you may run into some low lying areas that have standing water in those locations too. All of this is gradually moving to the east. This is going to push deeper into to Fannin and Cherokee counties pretty soon over the next 10 15 minutes. Here's the big picture. Then when we put our clouds and radar together, we certainly had those clouds across our area. What about this cold front? Well, that's really going to come into play more when we talk about our weather for tomorrow with more storms on the way. So as we look at future cast for tonight, we continue to see that push coming through. Not as much activity in Alabama and Georgia, the exception really being kind of Fannin County, and that's going to continue to move eastward. Notice early during the morning hours of Sunday, though, not much going on. I do think if you have an early church service, there might be a little bit of activity to interfere with you for our eastern communities, but overall the first part of the day on Sunday is going to be pretty quiet. Let me take you to the afternoon, though. So here's 1 p.m., an isolated storm possible, but as that cold front, remember the one I pointed out to you, drops across our area on Sunday, particularly after 3 p.m. That's when we're going to get scattered to numerous storms. During this window of time, we will have an isolated threat for a severe storm and even an isolated risk for some flooding too. Now this is all going to wrap up early on Monday morning. That cold front drops to the south of us, clearing skies on Monday. You're going to get better weather as the day on Monday progresses and high pressure slides into place. It's going to feel a lot nicer outside. So when we look at our severe outlook for Sunday, we're under that level one marginal risk across our area. Again, that's low end, but we do want you to pay Pay attention to it. Damaging high winds, the biggest problem, but some limited hail also possible. And then I also mentioned that localized flooding threat too. With those numerous storms possible on your Sunday, we already see that flood advisory right now. We had rain in recent days. We could see a few of those for tomorrow too. They want you to be aware of total rainfall by the time we get to Monday at 6 a.m. Certainly we could see some individual pockets of additional one to two inches being possible hits the flooding threat. So when we talk about tonight, some storms, but once we get past the next 30 minutes or so, I think those strong storms are going to die down. Most lows in the 60s tonight and then tomorrow quiet for the first part of the day. But those storms are going to increase into the afternoon with highs only in the 80s. Tomorrow will be a storm alert weather day with those storms that isolated severe risk and the localized flooding threat as well. Cornelia. Alrighty, thank you so much, Allison. Shed ahead on Local 3 News at 11. The Chattanooga Red Wolves try and go for their first win since June 7th. Plus, it was an NISA semifinals rematch for Chattanooga FC and the Michigan Stars. The one, the only, the sports girly, Samantha Xano has highlights from a busy soccer night in the scenic city up next in sports. And as we head to break, here's a look at our North Georgia Toyota camera in Dalton. We'll be right back.
let's use our handy dandy time machine and go back to October 30th, 2022. Chattanooga FC was hosting the Michigan Stars in the NISA semifinals, where the boys in blue got shut out by the Stars 1-0. That ended CFC's season, while Michigan went on to win the championship. But since that night, Chattanooga FC has not lost a match, starting 2023 with an 11-game unbeaten streak. There's only one other club in the league that could say that they were undefeated. Yes, that other club is the Michigan Stars. And yes, they paid a visit to Fort Finley tonight. Only one of those streaks could stay intact. Let's take you to the action. 38th minute, it's a scoreless match, and Marcus Naglestad, we trust. The reigning Golden Boot winner finds the net yet again. He has scored in every match that CFC has scored in this season. Boys in blue on top 1-0. Right before the half, the 44th minute to be exact, Lionel Alvarenga puts it in for the second straight week. That gives CFC a 2-0 lead heading into the break, and that score will hold. Start those buses, Michigan. CFC stays undefeated with a 2-0 dub over their rival. The boys in blue have 11 days off before heading to Maryland to face the Bobcats on July 19th. Over in East Ridge, the Chattanooga Red Wolves were looking for their first win in over a month. Debuting a new uniform on Saturday, the Wolf Gray. Kind of like it. Let's pick things up in the second half. Wolf packed down a goal. Six minutes of added time to try and get them on the board. Off the corner kick, Riley Kraft gets it to Ropapa Mensa, who scores the equalizer. This club just thrives in that final 45. It's Mensa who comes in the clutch this time around. The Red Wolves draw even with Northern Colorado Hailstorm 1-1. Undefeated in the Wolf Gray era, might I add. Next up, a 2022 USL League One Finals rematch with South Georgia Tormenta next Saturday. The best team in Major League Baseball showed up just enough at the Trop last night. And spoiler alert, it was not the Tampa Bay Rays. Winning just comes easy for the Atlanta Braves, doesn't it? So would it come easy again tonight? Spencer Strider on the bump for the Bravos. He was spectacular. 6.1 innings pitched, zero earned runs, four hits, 11 punch outs. No sophomore slump for Spency. He has 166 strikeouts heading into the All-Star break. Speaking of All-Stars, let's move to the fourth. Two on for Matt Olson. He goes right up the middle to get Atlanta on the board. It's 1-0 Braves. Next in line is All-Star catcher Sean Murphy. Murphy seems like a really nice guy, but clearly he doesn't care that that ball had a family. Absolutely demolishes one 406 feet. That makes it 4 nothing Atlanta. This one seems over in the ninth, but Ronald Acuna hasn't driven one in yet, so he says that has got to change. RBI single up the middle, pads the Braves lead. They win this one 6-1 the final. They clinch the series win over Tampa. One more to go before pretty much the entire team heads to Seattle for the All-Star festivities. Down in the minors, the Chattanooga Lookouts bounce back with a 4-0 win over the Rocket City Trash Pandas. The Lookouts got things started in the second with a home run from James Free. Drew Mount in his 2023 debut extended the lead, and Ivan Johnson has just been red hot lately. He had an RBI double. The Lookouts will try and go for that series win tomorrow. First pitch is at 5.05. Meantime, the tributes continue to pour in for Lady Vol legends Nikki McCray Penson, who passed away yesterday. Tennessee head coach Kelly Harper said in quote part, Our hearts are broken as we mourn the loss of a beloved Lady Vol. Nikki had a bright and loving personality and touched the lives of everyone she met. Lady Vol forward Rakia Jackson, who previously played for McCray Penson at Mississippi State, said, quote, My heart is so heavy, one of the most beautiful souls I've ever met, the one who genuinely went out of their way to understand me when I was so misunderstood. You fought so long and hard, and I am so grateful to have known you, end quote. And there is significant news in the world of women's soccer today. U.S. women's national team star Megan Rapino has announced that she will retire at the end of this season. Rapino will play in her fourth and final World Cup this summer before returning to her NWSL team, the OL Reign. Rapino won an Olympic gold medal for Team USA in London back in 2012. Last year, she became the first soccer player to receive the Presidential Medal of Freedom, a true legend for female athletes in U.S. soccer and women's soccer. So she's going out on her own terms. Yeah, what a true legacy she behind. leads behind, you Absolutely. know. And, you know, we love girl power here. We're all about girl power. Even she's holding it down on the field. We're doing it here in the studio. Especially tonight. You, me, and meteorologist Allison Pryor, who's here with our last check of the weather. Allison. All right, so if you have to get out,
out this evening tonight. Really, it's almost 1130. Do watch out for spots of rain, especially for our Tennessee communities. Heavy rain and storms moving across the area, continuing to push through, particularly along the Tennessee North Carolina line, extending down to Blue Ridge in Georgia. Just torrential rainfall at that point. Low temperatures tonight, a lot of spots in the 60s, 72, though, in the city of Chattanooga. As we look ahead to tomorrow, 74 at 9 a.m. Again, pretty quiet the first part of the day, partly sunny, a couple of isolated storms, but mainly it's going to be 3 o'clock and onward. Scattered to numerous storms are going to be possible. Highs tomorrow, a little bit cooler in the mid 80s for most, and tomorrow's going to be a storm alert weather day. Sounds like if you don't have to, might as well just stay home. There you if go. You don't have to go out, stay home. <laughs> All right, have a good night. We'll be back in the morning. Let's use our handy dandy time machine and go back to October 30th, 2022. Chattanooga FC was hosting the Michigan Stars in the NISA semifinals, where the boys in blue got shut out by the Stars 1-0. That ended CFC season and their playoff hopes, while Michigan went on to win the championship. But since that night, Chattanooga FC has not lost a match, starting 2023 with an 11-game unbeaten streak. There's only one other club in the league that could say that they were undefeated. Yes, that other club is the Michigan Stars. And yes, they paid a visit to Fort Finley on Saturday. Only one of those streaks could stay intact, so let's take you to the action. 38th minute, it's a scoreless match, and Marcus Naglestad, we trust. The reigning Golden Boot winner finds the net yet again. He has scored in every match that CFC has scored in this season. Boys in blue on top, 1-0. Right before the half, the 44th minute to be exact, Lionel Alvarenga puts it in for the second straight week. That gives CFC a 2-0 lead heading into the break. And that score will hold. Start those buses, Michigan. CFC stays undefeated with a 2-0 dub over their rival. The boys in blue have 11 days off before heading to Maryland to face the Bobcats on July 19th. Over in East Ridge, the Chattanooga Red Wolves were looking for their first win in over a month, debuting a new uniform on Saturday, the Wolf Gray. Let's hear those thoughts on them. Let's pick things up in the second half. Wolf packed down a goal. Six minutes of added time to try and get them on the board. Off the corner kick, Riley Kraft gets it to Ropapa Mensa, who scores the equalizer. This club just thrives in those final 45 minutes. It's Mensa who comes in the clutch this time around. The Red Wolves draw even with Northern Colorado Hailstorm late 1-1. Undefeated in the Wolf Gray era, might I add. Next up, 
is a 2022 USL League One Finals rematch with South Georgia Tormenta next Saturday.